and veggie sausages. Right. So before we uh, dive into the class, just a little bit of background. Uh, if you haven't been to the other classes that I've done, uh, I'm Colin. I've been vegan for about 25 years. And uh, my, uh, my two boys are uh, 18 and 21. And uh, they have, are both have both been vegan their whole lives. So, uh, you know, veggie burgers and veggie sausages, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, I would kind of save as a special treat for the summer. And, uh, you know, was yet another way to be able to get uh, my kids to be able to eat whole grains and beans and, you know, veggies and all of that. So uh, these recipes that we're doing today are from uh, my first cookbook, which is the Healthy Vegan Cookbook. And uh, just to make my publisher happy, uh, this is available on Amazon on uh, print and also ebook version. Um, there are uh, over 200 recipes in the cookbook and uh, all different whole food, um, you know, trying to get, uh, trying to recombine fruit, uh, fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans and things in as many different ways as possible. And also there's the uh, smoothies that taste like Girl Scout cookies, uh, which is also available on Amazon as well. All right, so uh, this class, um, the veggie burgers and sausages. So, you know, when I wrote the cookbook even uh, several years ago, there were not as many different options as there are now uh, at the supermarket to be able to buy. You can get the Impossible Burger, Beyond Burger, of course, those are plant-based and uh, uh, you know, I have those myself sometimes. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a purist. Uh, you know, I'm happy to have that if I'm out and about. But, you know, when I'm home, I try to cook most of the food myself and, uh, you know, try to use as few processed ingredients as possible, try to incorporate more of those whole grains and beans and veggies and everything. And this way you get to control what goes into it. If you see the ingredients list for a Beyond Burger or Impossible Burger, it is very long. Um, whereas, you know, this is much more simple, um, uh, you know, these also freeze very well, so you can make like a double batch because it, it does kind of take a little while to make these. Uh, but, you know, the benefit here really is health, you know, these are going to be uh, very healthy, um, you know, using lots of healthy ingredients and, uh, uh, you know, being able to freeze these and, and just have them ready for uh, you know, my kids would come running through the door and be looking for some food, and I just have these on hand. It makes it so much more convenient, and, um, you know, it takes a little while to make it, but then, you know, you can just reheat it. There are also a lot of options on how you want to make it, too, so you can make these on the grill, but um, they are not quite like the, the Impossible Burger. Um, they're a little bit looser uh, because they're using a lot of vegetables and whole grains and things, so it's not going to quite stick together like uh, like a impossible burger might. So, um, you know, we'll go over ways to cook it. You can cook it on the grill. Uh, it just might fall apart a little bit more. So it depends on how you cook it. Um, I, I like to use these. I like to make these in the air fryer. Um, you can use really very little oil and be able to cook these up in an air fryer pretty easily or reheat them in an air fryer. You can, um, you know, cook them on the stovetop in a frying pan and cooking that way as well. So a lot of different options, we'll cover all those. Um, really the main, uh, one of the main tips in all of these recipes, all of the uh, veggie burger recipes in the Healthy Vegan Cookbook is uh, you want to use all, all the ingredients uh, you want to have cooked first. So like the potatoes, the beans, uh, the you know vegetables, onions, things like that. You want everything to be cooked before you put everything in the food processor and um, you know cook these on the stove top. Uh, you know when you're cooking these on the stove, it's really just kind of um, you know like reheating it or you know just kind of frying it so that there's kind of a crispy outside. Um, at, you're not wanting to actually you know you want it to be all cooked before you put it on the stove basically. So you know you don't want to bite down into a uh, raw piece of garlic. Maybe you do, but most people don't. So uh, it's best to have all that stuff cooked ahead of time. So we'll go over all that. Uh, the first recipe that we're gonna do is the India Indian masala burgers. So this is uh, kind of similar to what you find at uh, Trader Joe's. They have the masala burgers in the frozen section. Uh, you know, really fun Indian tastes in here. 
And um, so we're going to go over how to make it. Um, the one that you get at the supermarket is um, it tends to have a lot of oil and fat in it. So this is going to be a much lower fat, more healthy version. All right. So uh, basically, I cooked a lot of this ahead of time just to kind of save time. Um, in the instructions, I call to uh, boil the potatoes. There's two large Yukon Gold potatoes that are peeled and cubed. Um, you really don't want to use, you don't want to have the peels on this because um, you don't, the, like the peel, uh, it doesn't really blend up very well. You're going to have pieces of it. And, um, you know, you want this to be able to um, be as combined as possible. So, um, you know, one of the few times in the book, I say better to peel it. Uh, so that, and then we're going to do um, the half a cup of chopped carrots. Uh, you want to boil the potatoes and the carrots together for a while just because those are the two things that are going to cook the longest. And then at that point, uh, once the potatoes and the carrots are soft, then you would add the, um, let's see, uh, half a cup of yellow onions that have been chopped, uh, half a cup of corn kernels, definitely fine to use frozen if that's what you have uh, that makes it extra convenient. Uh, two cloves of garlic, one inch thumb of ginger, um, it's probably easier if you just kind of slice it. Um, you don't need to grate it. Uh, um, you want to just cut it into smaller pieces. And uh, also there's going to be the uh, half a cup of green bell pepper that's been chopped. So uh, that's all in here. This has all been cooked. So everything is nice and soft. So when I put it in the food processor, it's going to just uh, combine together. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the food processor now. And, um, uh, you know, like in the classes before uh, that I've done, if you want to ask questions while I'm using the food processor, it uh, kind of gives the opportunity to do that if you wanted to. All right. Um, as far as the food processor goes, I like to, uh, the one that I have is a Cuisinart. Um, this is a large capacity 14 cup bowl. Uh, it's definitely larger than the standard. So uh, that's what I always recommend. If you uh, were going to get a food processor, it's better to get one that has a really large capacity like the 14 cup. Otherwise, you're going to have to do this in smaller batches. And, um, you know, it's going to be really inconvenient to have to keep stopping and, you know, doing it in multiple batches. So. Uh, also to this, I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So we have uh, half a cup of oat flour, which is right here. All right. So um, oat flour is really easy to make. You know, this is definitely not something that you have to run out and buy oat flour and try and find that. Um, I just, before I started the class, I just put a half a cup of rolled oats in the blender and then uh, just uh, uh, blended that up into uh, powder. So there's the oat flour and the oat flour uh, really helps to absorb the liquid uh, from this recipe and also helps to, uh, it also acts as a binder along with the potatoes. All right, and we're also gonna add a half a cup of cooked chickpeas, which are here. And again, the chickpeas help to kind of form a paste which really kind of helps to uh, all stick together as well. All right, so uh, just going down through the recipe, we already added the half a cup of chopped yellow onions, half a cup of the chopped carrots. We have the half a cup of corn kernels, half a cup of green bell pepper chopped. And then we're going to add a third of a cup of fresh cilantro to this. Um, you can add uh, parsley, I suppose. It's really not a 100% equivalent, but um, same sort of idea here. And then I have the two cloves of garlic and the one inch thumb of ginger in here as well. Um, I add one tablespoon of curry powder. Uh, in my own, in the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, I have actually a recipe on how to make your own curry powder. Um, so I put that in, that's my own here. All right. And then I'm gonna put in a half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, here, you know, you can put in more or less depending on how much salt you like in things. If you try to keep salt to a minimum, then, uh, you know, you can put in as much or as little as you want. Um, 
And then as far as the salt goes, this is the type of salt that I like to use, the Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D. Redmond Real Salt, it has the highest mineral concentration of any salt on the market. So I will put that in. There's a teaspoon of the salt, or half a teaspoon of salt. And then the last one is going to be a quarter of a teaspoon of mustard seeds. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, these are optional, of course, you don't have to put these in, um, uh, but these are black mustard seeds. Um, if you're gonna put them in whole, I definitely would recommend that you um, uh, just dry, dry roast them for a little bit. You put them in a little, um, like I have a, a small cast iron uh, pan, uh, saute pan, and I just put that in and just put it on low heat and just keep, um, uh, keep moving them until they start to pop a little bit and then take it off the heat immediately. So roasting these really releases the flavor of the black mustard seeds. Um, the alternative to that is if you wanted to use a spice grinder, uh, you can put the, the quarter of a teaspoon of the black mustard seeds in the spice grinder, right? And then uh, that'll make it into a powder and then you get more flavor in every bite with that as well. Right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, process this just for a minute. Um, what I usually like to do is to just do it for a minute and then just kind of scrape down the sides make sure everything's getting blended up really well. Uh, what, so you want to blend it to the point where everything is pretty well blended in, but you don't want to turn this into just mush, right? So uh, this is like kind of a halfway, you still want to have the texture of the vegetables, but you're not trying to puree it to the point where um, you can't see any vegetables in it and it's just a big bowl of mush. So you don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that. And then, like I said, it's a perfect time to ask any questions. I see there are some in the chat, and so we'll get to those in just a little bit. All right. All right. Eric? Yes. So um, the first question is if there is an alternate ingredient to the green pepper, could they use a hotter pepper? Uh, yes. Yep, you could use a hotter pepper, sure. If you're more adventurous than me. <laughs> um, and Alice asked, only the vegetables are cooked? Yes, yeah. Um, sorry, it's a little confusing in the uh, recipe uh, where I said put everything in uh, to be cooked. It's really just the, the vegetables uh, and the onion and the garlic and the ginger. You want to make sure that those are all cooked because you really just don't want to bite down into the raw, um, you know, raw pieces of vegetable or the onion or the or the uh, garlic. Um, and Gail's asked, can you make in the Vitamix? Hmm. Uh, instead of the food processor, hmm. The benefit with using the food processor is that because you have so much space here um, and you're blending it you're not uh, blending it to the point that it turns into the mush, which I think if you use the Vitamix to do it, um, because it's, it's tall and thin, the cylinder, then anything at the bottom is gonna be, get completely pureed and it's not really gonna get the stuff at the top as well. Uh, you know, Vitamix, uh, believe me, I love Vitamix. I use it for everything as we've seen in some of the other classes, but um, to use it for something like this, uh, I really would say the food processor is better if, if you have that available to you. And then Linda's so, asked um, for the chickpeas with or without liquid. It looked like it was without liquid. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't add the liquid to it. Uh, so yeah. the good point though. Um, so usually what I like to do uh, because, uh, you know, the canned beans are, are of course very convenient, uh, but it's so much cheaper to buy the dried beans and cook them yourself. Uh, one thing that really makes it super convenient is um, uh, if you have the Instant Pot electric pressure cooker, um, it's just a set it and forget it thing. You can throw it in, cook the beans, um, put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer, and then you have those on hand anytime, you know, uh, so much of the time that I'm cooking, like I'm not thinking ahead the next day of, you know, oh, I'm going to need beans. I got to soak them and, you know, go through all of that. 
so, you know, just from the standpoint of convenience, um, I will usually just, um, you know, make a batch or two, put them in the freezer, and then I just have them anytime that I want to use them. I use chickpeas for so many different things. It's great to have them on hand for when I need them. All right. All right. So this is the mixture here. All right. So you can see that there are still pieces of the vegetables in here. It's not just like a homogenous mush. All right. And so what I'm going to do here is um, this is going to make enough for about six patties. And so uh, because it is pretty sticky right now, uh, what I'll do for the mixture is uh, I will um, coat it in graham flour. All right. So this is chickpea flour. Uh, this might be a little bit difficult to find at the supermarket. Um, so, um, you know, you could use cornmeal for this, or um, I suppose you could just use regular flour, um, you know, just as a coating, uh, just to help the uh, veggie burger not to be so sticky when you're cooking it. Um, but graham flour is just, um, this is fine graham flour. This is uh, chickpea flour. So this is just really finely ground chickpea um, so not to be confused with Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M flour, totally different thing. This is just ground chickpeas, um, uh, you know, from a, a processed uh, ingredient standpoint, this is just ground up chickpeas. So I'm going to use this as the base in a bowl. Okay. So I'll fill in the bowl, maybe about a uh, half a cup of the graham flour in the bottom of the bowl. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a handful of the mixture here and you know, form it into like the size of a patty here. And I'm just gonna drop it into the graham flour and then put it on the other side either way. And then, because now that really helps to make it not sticky so I can handle it now. All right, and then just gonna shape it into the size of a burger, All right? So I will end up making about six of those, All right? And then what I'm gonna do to cook these is, like I said, my preferred way to cook it is going to be in uh, an air fryer, okay? So what I'll do, and I'll show you in just a minute, I'm just gonna make another one of these so I can show you. All right, so we have, that's about a patty size, right? So you can make them nice and thick because everything in it is already cooked. So you don't have to worry about making it too thick or anything. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wash my hands off for a second. And then I'll show you. Um, when I use an air fryer, uh, what I usually do is use parchment paper. Uh, and I'll show you that real quick here. All right, so this is how to make these with really very little oil. All right, so I'm gonna take some parchment paper and tear off a piece. And then I will take, uh, let's see, you can either cut it or tear it however you, however you want, but um, cut off pieces that are just about big enough for the patty. All right, so I'll put that on. Okay, it's still pretty soft because it hasn't really cooked yet. All right, so I'm gonna put it on the patty, on the paper like that. And then uh, what I usually will use is a little bit of spray oil. All right, just enough to coat it. So this is really just um, when you put it in the air fryer um, or, you know, if you're cooking it on, a, uh, on the stovetop, um, on a cast iron pan uh, or a nonstick pan, you're really just at this point, you're just cooking the outside so that it's uh, crispy, right? So that it's, that really helps to hold it all together. All right, so I'll just uh, spray, spray, you know, just a spritz on here, right? And then I'll put, uh, like I said, I like to use the air fryer. So I'll put it in the air fryer, uh, let's see. I should read my own directions here. Um, uh, if I put it in the air fryer, I'll put it in for, let's say, six minutes at, um, 
380 degrees. And then after the six minutes, you can take, uh, I can usually fit about three of these at a time in the air fryer, um, you know, just like in a cast iron pan. Um, definitely, you don't wanna put the, the burger mixture right on the, um, the copper of the air fryer, you know, with all the holes in the bottom. Um, it's really going to sink into the holes. So you're really, if you're going to use an air fryer, you really want to use the parchment paper underneath. Uh, and that'll really help to um, make sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the air fryer uh, because then it's just going to kind of fall apart. So definitely want to use the parchment paper. Um, if you're uh, cooking this on the stove, then, um, you know, if you're going to use a, a cast iron pan or a nonstick pan, uh, probably about, uh, you know, four or five minutes on medium heat, and then you'll be able to uh, flip it over. You can also bake these, definitely. Um, you can put them on a nonstick baking sheet, and that'll totally work fine as well. Um, and then just uh, bake those at um, about 375 for, I'd say, uh, maybe like six to 10 minutes, and then take it out, turn it over, and then bake the other side uh, for the same amount, right? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the mixture into a bowl and then I'll get to that later and cook that all later because uh, it's not even going to be ready in time for the, the class to be over. So there's really no sense in me making it right now. Um, are there any other questions? Yeah, there's one Deborah asked, can we grind the chickpeas into powder in the Vitamix? And I think um, Deborah, you can correct me in the chat if you're wrong. Do you mean the gram as a way to make the gram? Um, was it called gram flour? Yes, yeah. Um, let's see, the, the chickpeas have to be dry um, to do that. Uh, it would make an awful, awful racket. Uh, it would be so loud to try to grind down uh, dried chickpeas in a Vitamix. Uh, Vitamix is loud to begin with, but then that would be really loud. Uh, also something like that, it would work, uh, but it's gonna be very loud. And also the plastic container of the Vitamix, it's gonna really scratch up the sides um, of the plastic. So it's gonna make it really cloudy, uh, which, uh, you know, it can affect what the Vitamix actually looks like. Yeah, she said, I have a special carafe to make flour from grains. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. So, yes, that would work. All right. So, I'll put the rest of the mixture aside and I'll make the rest later. And I will just rinse this off and we'll go to the next recipe. So, there are a number of different uh, recipes, uh, veggie burger recipes in the Healthy Vegan Cookbook. Um, one of the things that I kind of focus on is, uh, you know, using spices in the burger itself, the burger mixture, um, to give it, uh, you know, different tastes. Um, but also it's what uh, you pair it with for a sauce that also gives it a great taste. So um, with this particular recipe, the Indian masala burgers, there's spice in the recipe and the, the mixture, and that has a good taste as well. But if you pair it with, um, what I recommend is uh, slices of fresh tomato on a, on a burger bun. Uh, also, uh, I have a recipe in the cookbook for eggless mayo uh, to how to make your own mayonnaise without oil. Uh, so much healthier. And then mix that in um, with some curry powder and you're basically making like a a curried aioli. Uh, so that goes fantastic as a spread for this. Uh, so that's my recommendation, but you can add what you want. All right. So I'm just going to rinse this off and be ready to do the next recipe. And you'll see in the notes, I call it um, blasphemous curry powder. Um, the reason that I call it that is, uh, you know, the idea of using curry powder in the first place uh, is a little bit blasphemous in the Indian community um, because uh, a lot of Indian people would tell you there's no such thing as curry powder, forget that it exists, 
it's you you know curry powder is sort of a is almost like an american invention of like this is what indian should taste like um you know it's like a generic indian flavor um so you know in a lot of uh, restaurants or you know people who do a lot of uh, uh home cooking uh style uh, they would say you know forget curry powder it doesn't exist you know use the whole spices um you know to make what goes into curry powder but um so that's why I called it that. I was just being a little cheeky. Right. So the next recipe that we're going to do is the Cuban black bean burgers. All right. So many different versions of, of this online. I definitely didn't come up with it. Um, but, you know, this is sort of my whole foods uh, unprocessed take on that as much as possible. So uh, in the food processor, I'm going to put in, um, let's see. Uh, I have two cups of the black beans, so I'm going to put in um, about a cup and a third and then leave two thirds, about two thirds of a cup of black beans out for later, um, because ultimately I'm going to mix those in at the end, um, because I want the, the beans to kind of create a, a paste uh, to be able to hold the bean, the burger together, but I also like the texture of black beans, so I don't want to uh, blend all of them. Uh, I want them to have some whole black beans in them. All right. So with the instructions, um, there are some things that, uh, you know, like there's a quarter of a cup of red onion, there's the two cloves of garlic, uh, and then also half a green bell pepper. Uh, again, you know, from the perspective of trying to cook these to make sure that whenever you're eating these, you're not biting into a piece of like raw garlic or something. Um, I definitely recommend uh, sauteing those. Uh, I like to water saute uh, as much as I can. So that's just, you know, putting in just a little bit of water on the bottom of the pan um, and then just basically frying it with water. You don't have to use oil to do that. Uh, you just want to make sure you stir constantly just so that it's cooked and then you can add it in. All right. So I'm going to add, uh, there's the most of the beans and then also I have a cup of the short grain brown rice here that I've cooked. So I'll show you. Um, this definitely would recommend short grain brown rice here and not medium or long grain. The short grain brown rice um, has more, um, uh, it's a more glutinous rice, so it's stickier. So it's really gonna help this uh, stick together well. All right, so I'm just gonna get a spoon and scrape the rice into here. So you really want this to help to make the whole thing stick together. So, you know, just like in the, in the previous recipe, I used the oats, uh, the oat flour. Uh, that's really, uh, really helped to the, that recipe to stick together. And then in this recipe, it's going to be the brown rice that does that. All right. And then I'm going to add to that a, let's see. Uh, I'm going to put in uh, two thirds of a cup. Sorry, uh, getting ahead of myself. There's a tablespoon of lime juice that I put in here. I just squeezed that before the class. I have a, a teaspoon of ground cumin. So the seasonings in that and then also in the sauce as well. And we'll talk about that later. There's a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I really like the smoked flavor that it adds to it. So you could just use regular paprika if you want. I just really love that smoky flavor. All right. And then I'm going to put in a teaspoon of sea salt, the Redmond real salt into that. All right. So when I use salt, um, I don't really like things to be salty. Um, I like to use salt basically uh, as an amplifier. Right, so you want it to kind of boost up the taste that are there already without actually being able to taste the salt in there. So that's what I prefer. All right, and I'll put in about a half a teaspoon of liquid smoke. Um, uh, this is, uh, normally it comes in a plastic bottle, but that broke, so I just keep it in a little jar in the refrigerator. Uh, liquid smoke is just water that's been infused with smoke, so um, it just gives things a nice smoky flavor. Um, most supermarkets do have this. It's usually in the condiment section. 
uh, along with um, like if you look where the steak sauce is, then you're probably going to find liquid smoke. All right, so I'm going to put in a little goes a long way. So just a, like a half a teaspoon there. All right, and then I have the mixture of the cooked. Uh, there's the uh, the red onion, uh, the green bell pepper, and the cloves here that cooked. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And also, uh, I have just for a little bit more con consistency of it too, I do have a half a cup of the quick oats. So um, if you don't have quick oats, uh, you could just put the rolled oats into the food processor separately before you've done this uh, or in the blender and just kind of grind it down. You don't need it to be flour. Uh, I like the texture in this recipe. I want it to have lots of body and texture. So. Um, it's just the uh, cut up pieces of oats, basically. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this together. And uh, uh, just like before, if you have any questions or any comments, um, then uh, please go ahead and put those in now and I will start blending. Um. Linda had a question about the oats, which you got to, um, and then, I mean, this is more for, for Deborah, actually, the name of the carafe that you used to make the grains and where you got it from, if you feel like typing that in. Um, but does anybody else have other questions about the recipe? Um, free to type them. That may be the separate, um, Vitamix has a separate um, pitcher that's just, you know, specifically for uh, grains and uh, grinding things down, uh, you know, nut butters, things like that. So that's probably what I would assume. That's probably what she's talking about. So again, you know, you're not trying to process this to the point where it's just mush. Uh, you know, you do want it to have some consistency to it. Uh, so that looks pretty good to me. And then I'll put this in a bowl. Okay. And then I will mix the black beans into that, the remaining black beans. So, you know, these are black bean burgers after all. So I don't want the black beans to kind of get lost in the mix. I want those to be really kind of front and center here. So just gonna mix, put this into the bowl here. And Colin Ellis asked where odds and ends are referenced in the recipes. Is that in the cookbook? Yes. Yeah, there's a whole odds and ends chapter uh, full of different recipes that um, they just ended up getting stuck there because I didn't know where else to put it in the cookbook. So there's lots of uh, interesting and sometimes strange uh, recipes in that section. All right. So this is what the mixture looks like. And then I'll add the black beans, the rest of the black beans, about two thirds of a cup or so into that. All right, so I'll just kind of mix it together. And it's basically going to be the same kind of thing as before, where um, instead of using graham flour, uh, which I suppose you could do it, uh, I really like to use uh, cornmeal for this one. All right, so I will get out a bowl and do the same thing. Put in about a half a cup of the cornmeal in the bottom of the bowl because, you know, as of as it is right now, the mixture is pretty sticky. All right, so this is really going to help to be able to cook it. Um, also, one thing in the recipe that, you know, I'm kind of like getting ahead of myself here, but one thing that's really important in the recipe is. Um, you know, because these have grains in it, it has oats in it, um, any of the liquid, you really want to let this set for a while. You let it rest. So you put the mixture together. You know, I'm, I'm kind of doing it fast because we're doing the class. But um, once you process everything together, uh, just let it rest for like 10 or 15 minutes. That's really going to help to absorb uh, the liquid that's in there. Those oats are going to absorb that. 
Um, and that's really going to help it to stick together better. Whereas if you do it right now, then um, it has a little bit of a harder time sticking together. So um, just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show you. Uh, so you take about a handful of the mixture and form it into patty shape. And then I drop it into the cornmeal. Just kind of dust it on either side here. That makes it a lot less uh, sticky and easier to manage. All right. So you can see there's one of the burgers. And so, you know, same as before, you can just cook this on the parchment paper and an air fryer. You can pan fry these. Uh, these will come out great. Um, you know, like I said, because, um, because you're using whole food, healthy in ingredients in this, um, it's not really going to hold together in the same way that, you know, like a hamburger might, uh, or, you know, like a Beyond Burger or something might. So, um, you know, it's, it's not, you can't put this directly on a, uh, on a grill, uh, on the, the metal lines in the grill, um, because it's just going to fall apart. So if you wanted to use a grill, you definitely could do that. Uh, but what I would recommend is that you put it on a piece of tin foil um, and then set it onto the grill. Um, otherwise, it's just going to kind of fall apart into the, the lines of the, the metal lines of the grill top. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the rest of the mixture aside and uh, I'll rinse out the food processor for the last one. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments at this point? For this yeah, there is a couple. Um, Lynn's asked if you use unsalted canned goods. Uh, I really don't use canned goods uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, one because of the preservatives that are in it. Um, I, I, you know, I typically don't like to use canned stuff as much as possible, uh, but also because of the cost. It's just so much cheaper uh, to just make your own, uh, you know, as far as uh, soaking the beans and cooking them, uh, you know, definitely is, is less convenient uh, if you just decide all of a sudden that you want to use something with chickpeas in it and you don't have any cooked ahead of time. But that's why I say, you know, it's, it's great if you can, um, you know, just throw it into the Instant Pot, the pressure cooker, uh, let it do its thing. You don't even have to do anything to it. It just cooks itself and then shuts off. So it's very convenient. And then you can put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer. Um, I would not recommend putting them into like a, um, like a plastic storage container uh, in the freezer because when you want to use them and you go to thaw them out, um, then you, know, you might not want to use the whole you know, if you have like three cups of frozen garbanzo beans, you might not want to use all three cups. So if you put it into a Ziploc bag instead of putting it into a, like a harder plastic storage container, then you can just, you know, the um, Ziploc bag is a lot easier to just kind of break off a piece that you want to use and then um, thaw that out and leave the rest in the freezer. Um, and then another interesting question, Maria asks, why do you prefer cornmeal for this um, recipe rather than the, the graham flour? Um, I suppose it's a little bit um, more traditional to use uh, corn uh, as this is a Hispanic uh, recipe, but uh, also um, the cornmeal is, um, um, it's, it's kind of got a, a grittier kind of consistency to it, whereas the graham flour is really fine. Uh, so, um, you know, when you pan fry this, especially, then um, it just, um, it just creates such a great, you know, lovely uh, kind of consistency and texture to the outside. So I really like it with this, but you can definitely use the graham flour if you wanted to. Okay. Um, and last question, I remember last time, you know, you said maybe search elsewhere for, for nutrition um, info, but it's about, um, Linda asked if, if the Beyond Meats are healthy. Yeah. The Beyond uh, Burger. Uh, you know, there's definitely uh, quite a debate about that online. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of the concept of, you know, what's healthy and what's less unhealthy. Uh, so, 
you know, a Beyond Burger is definitely processed. It's got, uh, you know, a fair amount of fat and salt in it. So, uh, you know, and it, it's definitely a very processed product, you know, to get plants to have that kind of consistency. So I would say, um, you know, it definitely has, um, it doesn't have any cholesterol, uh, unlike meat. And it definitely has a lot less saturated fat uh, than meat, you know, a meat burger does. So it's definitely going to be a lot healthier than a hamburger, but, you know, as opposed to something like, you know, these burgers, these um, whole grain burgers, then uh, yeah, it's definitely not as healthy as that. So, uh, you know, beyond burgers, I like them, you know, like I said, when I'm out, um, you know, lots of restaurants have them now, um, you know, it's amazing that I can go to Burger King <laughs> or, you know, um, you know, Red Robin or something like that. And they have something that I can, that I, as a vegan can eat, you know, it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, believe me, 25 years ago when I became vegan, uh, there was definitely nothing like that at all. So, you know, I appreciate the convenience of it. And, uh, you know, it makes it, you know, some, some vegans will say, well, it's not, it's a vegan burger, but it's not really for vegans. It's really you know, Beyond Burgers at, at Burger King, really more for people who are, you know, kind of curious about it, you know, want to be able to try it. And, um, you know, maybe they like that better. Um, it, you know, I like the taste of it. Um, you know, I enjoy it. It's just not something that I have, um, you know, every week or anything like that. Right. So any other questions before we move on to the last recipe? I think that's the last in the chat for now. Okay. All right. So the last recipe, we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit and make uh, some vegan sausages. All right. So uh, this is something that you can either, uh, this is the Italian style vegan sausage. And uh, there are different sausage recipes in the Healthy Vegan Cookbook. And, uh, you know, these, these recipes are similar in how you would make them. Um, these are just kind of different combinations of flavors to try. Um, so there are uh, veggie sausages and there are also veggie meatballs uh, in the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, uh, different ways of doing that as well. Uh, so this one, I'm oh, just gonna walk through here. Uh, this one is gonna use tofu. So, uh, one of the bases of uh, like Beyond Burger or Impossible Burger is usually uh, wheat gluten, all right? Uh, so a lot of recipes that you find for vegetarian burgers uh, that, you know, don't use all the grains and the beans and everything that uses wheat gluten. So vital wheat gluten, uh, if you're not vegetarian or vegan, uh, you might not have heard of it before, but it's basically just uh, uh, flour that's been washed. Uh, so it's basically um, uh, all you have left is the gluten part of the bread. The gluten is what makes bread uh, dough elasticy, right? So um, if you have uh, just the gluten flour, then you can uh, use that in recipes to make things kind of chewier. Um, you know, it gives things uh, a bit more of a, a meatier kind of texture, kind of holds, binds things together uh, well as well. Uh, but I find uh, if you use a lot of gluten flour um, in like a veggie burger or something like that, um, it does um, tend to make things a little bit too chewy for me. Uh, I like to uh, add a lot of other things to it so that it doesn't make it so dense uh, because that's, that's kind of what um, gluten flour does. Uh, if you are gluten free, then you definitely do, gluten would be gluten um, flour is like your nightmare because it is just pure gluten. So you definitely don't want to use that. Um, uh, let's see. I know I can see the question and it's relevant to address it here. Um, now there's a substitute uh, for tofu and if gluten-free, another substitute. Um, gluten flour, vital wheat gluten, um, because of the properties that, that it has, um, there isn't really another substitute for that, um, you know, directly. There's nothing else that you can put it in it that has the same properties. Uh, sometimes people use that chickpea flour 
And uh, that also helps to kind of bind things together, but it's, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one, uh, substitution. It's not going to be the same thing. So um, the reason that I put the tofu in this recipe is, um, you know, tofu is uh, very spongy in its consistency, but it's not really dense. So it, this really kind of helps to make it lighter. Uh, so as a substitute for tofu, um, I, honestly, if, if you're looking for substitutes for tofu and gluten, then this is probably not going to be the recipe that you want to use. I, I don't know what else you would use uh, because of the properties of it. Right. So uh, as far as the tofu goes, um, you definitely want to make sure that there is as little water in here as possible. So you want to take a block of tofu and uh, either put it in a press or put some plates on it and just kind of weigh it down. You want to try and get as much of the water out as possible for this recipe. You don't want this to be too wet. All right. Uh, so press the tofu for about 15 minutes, just get all the water out. Uh, and then I'll combine the dry ingredients in the food processor with an S blade. So uh, as far as the dry ingredients go, there's going to be a half a cup of nutritional yeast. So Again, uh, vegetarians and vegans always familiar with this, but um, not so well known outside of that community. Nutritional yeast is an inactive yeast, so it's not at all like brewer's yeast or anything like that. Um, and uh, so this is more of a, a health food store, like Whole Foods kind of thing. Trader Joe's has it. Um, more and more regular supermarkets are starting to stock this. Bob's, Bob's Red Mill has it. So, you know, if you have a section of your supermarket that sells Bob's Red Mill, like in the baked good and thing, baked good section, baking section, then you might be able to find nutritional yeast there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the food processor. Uh, nutritional yeast gives things kind of a sort of a, like a nutty kind of cheesy flavor. All right. So you're going to see there's a number of things that we add to this recipe to give it kind of a, a tangy kind of flavor. So uh, that is going to do that. Uh, there are a number of, of the powdered dry ingredients here that I've just mixed together in a bowl. But just to go over that, uh, there's two tablespoons of onion powder. You want this to be really oniony, but um, I don't put um, cooked onions in here uh, because um, the cooked onions, uh, it just kind of falls apart if you use cooked onions. So I use the onion powder. Uh, one tablespoon of fennel seeds. Typically what I do in this recipe is um, put the fennel seeds in a spice grinder. And then, so you just have the fennel powder uh, because uh, my wife really hates the um, biting into the fennel seeds, uh, but this makes it easier. All right, there's two teaspoons of ground black pepper here. Uh, also two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Again, love the smoke flavor of that. So I usually use smoked paprika. Uh, one teaspoon of, or two teaspoons of smoked sea salt. That's definitely kind of a specialty ingredient. You don't have to use that. You can just use the regular salt, it's fine. But if you happen to have some smoked sea salt, that just kind of gives it a little bit even more of a smoky flavor. All right, and then one teaspoon of dried oregano. All right, so put that in the food processor. All right, and then let's see, I'll add um, a number of ingredients to that. There's the six cloves of garlic, and you can see I just kind of slice those up um, just to kind of make sure, even when it's blended together, make sure that you're not biting into pieces of garlic. I have two tablespoons of tamari, uh, or you can use soy sauce. I like to use tamari. Uh, it's kind of a uh, gives it a, a bit of a richer, uh, deeper taste to it. All right, and then um, I'm going to put in uh, for another liquid ingredient. I put in uh, half half a cup of uh, white wine. So uh, you can definitely use uh, apple juice instead. Uh, depends on uh, you know if you uh, want to use alcohol or not. But I'll put that in. There's that's basically the liquid for the recipe. And I'm going to put in the cup of extra firm tofu. Right. And then I'll put in 
six uh, sun-dried tomatoes that I've soaked and chopped those. So again, that really kind of helps to give it more of a tangy flavor along with the, the white wine, if you wanted to use that. And then lastly, I'll put in a uh, half a cup of the fresh basil, right, chopped up. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely from the school that uh, you cannot use enough basil in anything. Uh, you can never put in too much basil. I love the, the wonderful flavor of that. Really, when it's all done, uh, the two things that you're going to taste the most in this sausage recipe is going to be the fennel seeds, uh, the fennel, and also the basil. Uh, so just love that flavor. All right, just going to pulse this together for a minute. And then Colin, I'm not so, uh, sure if you saw the question. Um, you use one tablespoon fennel powder or less in place of the seed? Um, I use a tablespoon of fennel powder. So um, I'll do, I'll do a one-to-one -one replacement of that. I, I really love the taste of fennel, so I don't mind if it's, if it's kind of strong. So just scraping it down, make sure everything gets blended together here. And again, like not trying to create a totally blended together paste. Just want to make sure that everything is blended together well so we're not biting into it and getting chunks of anything. So that looks great. So you can see that's about the consistency that we're going for here. So I'll put that in a bowl, large mixing bowl here. And then to this, we're going to add the uh, wheat gluten. All right, so I'll scrape this in first here, the mixture. And definitely with the wheat gluten, um, you know, just like the other recipes, you add that in and then you really want to let it rest. Uh, anytime you use gluten flour, uh, vital wheat gluten, um, once you've mixed it in with things, you have to let it sit for about 10 minutes. Um, it needs to be able to absorb the liquid in order to work correctly. All right, so now I will add in the wheat gluten to the mixture. And this is where you get to use your hands. All right, so you wanna mix it up, mix everything together well. Uh, you could use a mixing, like a uh, mixing paddle, uh, like a KitchenAid, but what fun is that? You get to actually get your hands right in it. And uh, also, uh, uh, word of advice, if you have any rings that you're using, this is where you probably want to take the rings off before you uh, get your fingers in here because it's just going to get this mixture is going to get all over your ring and uh, it's going to be hard to get off later. All right, so so you want to mix this together for several minutes, um, you know, just kind of in the interest of time, so we're not taking all night here. Um, I'll show you. Like I said, you really want to let this rest uh, for about uh, 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes before you start to form it into the sausage shape. But I'll show you uh, just for the, the sake of uh, you know time here. I know we're kind of getting to the end of it. So uh, it's sticky. It's enough at this point that it's malleable. You can work with it. and. Uh, so you want to try and form it into a sausage shape. Uh, this recipe makes about uh, six of these or so, right? So these will expand also when you cook them. So they're going to start out a little bit thinner, but then they definitely get thicker once you cook it, right? So that's about the shape, the sausage shape that you want to go for. Um, what I like to do to make these is uh, roll it up in aluminum foil. Okay, so I'll show you here. I want to take a piece of aluminum foil out. And then here, 
I'll move the camera down so you can see this here. All right, so, so basically I'm going to roll it up, fold it over on itself, roll it up. I'll twist the ends here. All right, so this doesn't seal it up. Uh, this, this seals it up um, to the point where if you cook this, if you steam this, uh, then it will expand. The steam is going to go into the tin foil. It's not that sealed. Um, it'll go into the tin foil. It'll cook this. Um, so uh, I usually cook it for about 45 minutes um, in a pressure cooker um, so that it steams it really well. If you're using a stovetop uh, steamer, then you probably want to do about an hour um, and then at that point open it up and add more water to it and then add an um, and then do it for another hour so two hours on the stove or if you have the a pressure cooker do it for 45 minutes and um, so like i said it's going to expand and it's not um, it's going to you know take the shape of of the foil that you've you've put it in here all right and so that's going to cook about 45 minutes in the uh, pressure cooker and then at that point um, you can uh, use it you can put it in the refrigerator uh, you can definitely put it in the freezer uh, these freeze really well and you can just save them for later um, my favorite use for these is if i'm making uh, pasta and some sauce uh, cut these up and put them in um, but these are definitely great just on their own as well all right and as you could see uh, there wasn't any oil or anything that went into it um, you know, these are similar in taste to if you've had the vegetarian uh, tofurkey uh, Italian sausage, <clears throat> uh, like at uh, Trader Joe's, uh, they sell that also. Um, it's similar to that in taste, but if you've had those before, you know that when you open up the package, it's super greasy. There's a lot of oil there um, <clears throat> uh, just to make sure that they don't stick together. But here's your chance to be able to make it without all of that oil and it's not going to stick together um, because it's all individually wrapped right so does anybody have any questions or comments about the uh, veggie sausage recipe before we finish up because I see we're we're just about at uh, seven o'clock here. Uh, or any other questions uh, about the burgers as well before we wrap things up. Uh, I see there's a question from Maria. All right. uh, is parchment paper also useful when air frying falafel in your cookbook recipe? Absolutely, a thousand percent. If you are going to use it uh, to make patties with, uh, or uh, if you are going to uh, form them into the, the ball shapes, um, then you wouldn't use parchment paper for that necessarily. Um, you know, the whole thing with the air fryer is you do want some of the air to be able to get get to it underneath um, uh, because you know that's the whole idea of the air fryer that it just creates this whole vortex of heat and air uh, like a convection oven very similar uh, so you want to make sure if you're going to use parchment paper you want to make sure that there is still some way for the air to be able to get through so maybe do it in like strips or something like that All right, any other questions or comments before we're all done? All right. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Colin. Yep. I just um, want to mention I'm... again, there's the Healthy Vegan Cookbook that has all those recipes in it. And also, uh, if you go to my website, which is colincooksvegan.com, uh, then there are lots of different classes that I teach. Um, at uh, libraries all over and uh, so just like this one it's they're all free you can um, find on um, there's the event calendar that shows all of the places and all the classes that i'm teaching so um, you know if you're interested you can follow along there as well and um, you can do some other recipes in other classes great Thank you so much, Colin, for, for this, this class and the whole series. I, um, I made a good decision and ate beforehand this time, so I'm not <laughs> like starving at the end. Um, and everybody, I wanted to let you know, I did link to Colin's website in the um, invite I sent out today, and um, I'll link to his cookbooks when I follow up with the, the recording of this. So 
Excellent. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And um, is, do you have a newsletter or something like that? Maybe or people, the best way is to just take a look at your website at the, at the event calendar for new um, classes you're offering. Um, it's really, yeah, just on the website. I, I don't have a newsletter or a blog or anything like that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll link right to that then too. All right, very good. One of the uh, the silver linings is all the all the cool Zoom stuff we'll we'll be doing for indefinitely, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, th thanks again, Colin, and thank you all for making it. And um, enjoy the rest of the the night and the beautiful weather. All right. Thank you so much, and thanks. Thank you also, uh, everybody, for for joining us tonight. Thanks so much. Alrighty. Take care, everybody. All right. Good night.